here with us this morning, and she's going to do our opening, so let's pray over her. Dear Heavenly Father, we do just thank you for the power that lives in us. Father, just use that power that's in Anne to speak to us and to speak to our lives. Lord, just calm any um, anxieties or fears within Anne. And Father, just use her for your power and your glory. Father, we just love you and we thank you and we thank you for Anne. And we just ask all these things in your precious and holy son's name. Amen. Amen. Good morning, ladies. Uh, first, I love that song, and I'm glad that I let God choose the song because it applies so much to what I'm planning to say today. I, every time I heard a song on the radio, I thought, oh, that's the one I want her to play. And then God said, leave it up to her. She will pick the best one, and she did. Am I speaking clearly to everyone? Okay. Oh, good morning again. <laughs> God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. good. Okay, now some of you ladies must not know that because I had a cheering section over here. <laughs> <laughs> but God is good. All, All the time. time. All the time. God, God is, is good. good. Thank you. Um, when I come up here, it's all God speaking. So all the glory goes to him. My husband says I have a mind like covey of quail. It goes that way. <laughs> so if I get off base, be patient, God will lead me back. Um, Susan has been trying since last year to get me to come up and talk. And after I hear each opening, I say, I don't really have anything else to add to that. They, they, they said it all, especially after last week's opening. But there is something, there's always something else that somebody needs to hear, somebody needs to know. So my story is about our year of 2021. Remember, that's still a COVID year. Um, our hands were tied in many ways. In January, my younger sister had her annual colonoscopy. And he says, I think you have a few cancer spots that we need to clean up and remove. God is good. He showed her that she needed this. Well, she had, she had the, the doctor went in, cleaned everything out. But when he was in there, he noticed some other masses that he didn't know what they were. So in that way, God was good that she had the cancerous polyps. Well, it turns out that she had to go to a specialist specialist that only specializes in this one cancer and the acronym is called L-A-M-N, and it has something to do with your appendix, and um, at some time, she, her appendix must have ruptured, and she didn't know it. And uh, she also had COVID, and she didn't know it, because they asked her when she had had it, and she said, I hadn't, and my sister's a nurse. <laughs> um, so, the doctor, he said, no problem, it's real slow growing, we'll go in, scrape it off, and uh, just clean it up. So he went in, and it's been uh, just a little bit over a year, and he, he cleaned it up, no problems. She was supposed to be in the hospital a week. And he, and he had to remove her gallbladder. Well, for, the stent that they put in for the gallbladder slipped. Mm -hmm. It filled her body cavity with um, bile, right? And she ended up with infection after infection, uh, two months in the hospital, um, and she lives in Dallas. And I mean, she <coughs> everything just that could go wrong did go wrong with her. None of the antibiotics. She was like on five antibiotics. 
Well, finally, they let her go out, and she told them she was not going back to the hospital. They informed her that if she got under 90 pounds, she was going back to the hospital. Finally, uh, gosh, I can't remember. I think, I think it was in May. My brother-in-law called and said, if you want to see her, you need to come. If you want to come talk to her. Uh, she's a very, very strong Christian and it, it, she was hurting bad enough. She said, God, please, whatever it takes. Our older sister and my husband and I went and visited her. And when we left, she started recovering more. <laughs> And while on our way to Texas to see her, we got a phone call from our younger son's widow who um, let us know that she had been airlifted to El Paso. God is good. He, for years, she has been battling all kinds of health problems. Um, the family thought maybe she was had a few other addictions and things that um, were really, that was her problem. Well, while she was there, and she refused to let the doctors release her until they found out something. I, I admire this daughter-in-law because she is stubborn <laughs> and she, she's a go-getter. And then they, di they finally diagnosed her with MS. <laughs> and they were gonna send her here and there for rehab and stuff, and she said, no, only in Roswell. That's where she, she's from. So she went back. She finally, after a couple of weeks, got him to send her back to Roswell for rehab. God is good. The day she got back, she finally was taken back on a Friday. Well, the day before, my other daughter-in-law took a step and broke her leg and her ankle. <laughs> and uh, the doctor informed her she had to quit using e vapor, vapors or e-cigarettes, whatever you call them, because it was making her bones brittle. Mm -hmm. This is another blessing that came out of the broken leg. And there were several others. So I had one daughter-in-law at Eastern and one daughter-in-law um, at the rehab center in Roswell and then my sister in, well, she was at home, but she was still going through a lot of treatments. So my grandson and I, Morgan, who grew up at CBS, um, were sitting in Denny's talking and I said, yeah, this kind of sounds like the book of Job. <laughs> and you know, you, you never ask God for patience. <laughs> and I'm, I've learned you never ask, you never talk about the book of Job unless you're doing a Bible study. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, and Morgan's my grandson that we can talk about God all of the time. He loves listening to the Bible and um, we pray together a lot. So this is where we are. On Monday, I was headed up to our ranch, which is a six hour drive. Um, remembering that with COVID, you can't go to the hospital. There's nothing you can do to help anybody except pray. And I know it's, it's never just accept <laughs> pray. pray. Prayer is the number one where you always start. So I had Sarah, the one that was diagnosed, diagnosed with MS, had um, her, baby, her, her third child, a girl, Presley, um, has had a two-year, had a one-year-old baby. She, Nori was one year old at that time. And Presley had some alcohol problems. And her liver, she was gonna to have to check into the hospital on Monday, the 29th, to um, go undergo treatment and things. And um, 
And I can remember this day very well because the 29th of June is when my mother died. Um, and it was also the day that it was raining from border to border, New Mexico, Colorado, and North. And it rained all day. The, um, when I was part way to Roswell, I got a call from Sarah from rehab saying that Presley had gone to the, to the ER. Her grandmother couldn't get her to wake up that morning. So she was laying in the ER and Sarah's sister was staying in the ER with her. Um, and all, all along, Sarah would call and give me an update. She finally said that Presley was gonna be airlifted to Albuquerque as soon as the weather let up. And I said, fine, I'll go to the ranch, um, drop off my dog, with my, leave it with my husband, and then I'll go to Albuquerque and be there waiting for her. And she gave me all the codes and everything I'd have to have. Well, that evening, um, Sarah called and Presley had died. So she's, Presley left behind a um, year old girl, Nori, and Sarah was in rehab, but Sarah was the only one that had power of attorney over anything. So, so Presley had to stay in the morgue. Um, and Sarah started trying to get the rehab center to let her out. Well, one, that was a long argument and finally they said, okay, you can get out and come back. So she had to get out. She had to go sign all the papers. I, in the meantime, had returned home. And Sarah Presley has two brothers and they were just numb. They had no idea what to do. They had never had to go through it. So then my husband and I were down here trying to help them walk through that. Well, Sarah's medication had not been adjusted and she could barely stay awake when we were having to do all the preparations. But God is good. He held us together. He got us through all that. Presley had told a CASA worker that she wanted her brother, her next older brother, to and his girlfriend to take care of Nori. Well, to make a long story short, after a lot of heartache between Nori's um, father, he finally gave temporary custody to them. Once again, God is good in all he does. He gave Presley freedom from all of the stress and all of the health issues she had, and he took care of her daughter. Sarah, they, took, they didn't think Sarah would ever be able to walk or do anything. Sarah now lives in an apartment by herself and she walks. She doesn't even have to use her cane mm -hmm. anymore. God is good. Now, back to the start of the story, my little sister. It is, she is still recovering, but she has been able to travel since last fall, late last fall, to see her kids. And once again, in everything, all the glory goes to God. It's when we're going through the storms, we have a hard time seeing. I think of the Bible verses, our memory verses this year, two of them I really knew, Joshua 1, 9, and Daniel 2, 20 through 22. And I clung to those. Now that we've been doing our last two verses in Peter have meant a lot to me. And then this whole year I have, this is probably the best year for a Bible study I've had. Mm. And it's because I'm looking and seeing God's hand over and over again. And all of this, it's, it's not a matter of, no, 
It's a matter of learning to see where God is trying to get us as a family, as an individual, to grow, to grow in our trust of him, and to remember that he knows the beginning to the end, mm -hmm. and that he's taking care of it, and that it's all in his hands. Now, I look out there, and I see story after story after story after story of God at work in each one of us. And we say, oh, my story's not important. You don't know that. God knows who he wants to hear your story. And Susan should have to be should, should have to have a long waiting list mm -hmm. of people that are wanting to get up here and tell their stories. Mm -hmm. It's practice. Remember, God tells us to be prepared. Mm -hmm. This is practice. This is part of your preparation because you have sisters here who love you and will support you. And if you make a mistake, they're still going to love you. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is, when you get up here, you trust God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit to give you the words that you need when you need them. And believe me, I told Susan, he and I were really discussing a lot about what I was going to say and not say. <laughs> so, okay. that's it. Mm.